Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right, so we were basically at the point that I met my husband and um, things changed completely because now I had somebody to um, share my life with. And so everything I did affected him. And so any crazy, you know, things I did in my life, um, you know, random decisions to go to another, you know, city to go dance in a show weren't something that I could just do anymore, you know, because I had to think about how it was going to affect my husband. And um, this was before we actually got married. I actually decided that we, we got engaged um, probably about a year later. And I knew that I couldn't be having a nightlife because I worked from like the earliest was like 10 o'clock at night until like three in the morning and sometimes four or five. So I knew that if we were going to get married and we wanted to have a family, we both realized that we wanted to have a family very fast. Um, he's eight years older than me. So he's like, I want to have children now because he didn't want to be walking down the graduation, you know, with his kid, you know, in a walker. <laughs> so that's the way he explains it. So I said, okay, and I was ready. I've been wanting a family for a while. So we got married and voila, we got pregnant. So basically before that happened, I knew I had to find a normal job, a day job, which was actually exciting to me because I was getting a little tired going to work at night and all that stuff. So I found a job in a temple, which was um, a, a location that's a, a Jewish temple, like a church, if you don't know what a temple is. And uh, I found Mitch is Jewish, so I needed to know exactly what being Jewish was about. If I was going to raise a family with him, I wanted to know what beliefs he had because I was never exposed to the Jewish religion. So I started taking classes with him, and um, it was a year long. Can you guys stop yelling, please? I just had a long conversation with them about that, and there it goes again. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I wanted to know exactly what I was getting into because I was a very, I was very, I am very close to God. I never was really strong in my religion. Alyssa Maya, I was um, not very strong in my religion, but I was, I've always been very close to God. So I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page of what we were going to be teaching our children. So I started taking this year-long class with him before we got married. And I actually got a job as the school secretary in the temple, which they have a daycare and a religion, I mean, a, a day school, a private school, a Jewish private school, as well as a religious school there. And so I became the school secretary, which I ended up loving. I learned a lot about the religion and I never intended to convert but I did because it actually felt most com comfortable in my heart for what their beliefs were and the just, I'm not going to get religious on you guys, but basically it set right for me of who I am and how the relationship I have with God. So my husband never expected me to do that, but I did it on my own choice. So it helped me learn, um, you know, my own religion as being part of this school, as well as I learned a lot of uh skills that I never thought I would need, nor did I thought that I, I had. Uh, administrative skills, meaning organization with my, you know, filing and keeping track of, because I did all the financial filing for all the, the kids in the day um, school. So all their financial plans, I learned how to handle all that and each file for each kid and keeping up with what they needed. If they were missing a, you know, one document for their, their loan, I knew how a, I created a system so I would remember that I didn't have that for them, like a checklist. And so all these skills I inquired through this, this, uh, the school of um, also helping managing time for my the director of the school because he had appointments all over the place, but he also had to participate in other things with the the actual uh, temple. And so I saw how utilizing a calendar was so important to keep him on track and make sure he was in his office again at three o'clock when he had an appointment with a teacher or a parent. So all these tiny little skills of organization, time management. And, uh, you know, being able to speak with people. Now, coming from jobs that everything was like entertainment, you know, for the most part, the last few years of my, my, my life, I really didn't need to worry about what other people thought. If I performed, I was good. But now I was dealing with parents that were paying money to go into school. And so I needed to be able to communicate with them and give them the customer service that they were expecting. And so I needed to create relationships with them because it was about the, their kid, child's education and they were spending a lot of money to go to the school. So I needed them to trust me. 
I needed them to know that I was taking care of their their loans and their information and their kid um, and keeping up with their kids, uh, you know, re- uh, tr- report cards and tracking everything. And so they knew that I was handling pretty much everything in the school uh, besides the really big stuff I couldn't. But all of the, basically the... Uh, the cake part of the of the school I was basically taken care of and all the icing was what the director did and then of course the um, core everything that makes up the cake was the teachers <laughs> if you if, if you're like a visual kind of person so like the eggs and the the sugar and the flour and all that that's what the teachers did but then I had to basically create the cake to make everything work together I was the coordinator of the school of all of our plans I coordinated all the parties and everything that we did for the school um, the activities so I learned so many different skills from this place but I have to tell you it burnt me out I would get there at eight o'clock in the morning I wouldn't leave till eight o'clock at night sometimes and I was thinking oh my gosh I want to have a family and I'm so stressed out and so tired I'm never gonna even have time to be with my husband first of all and um, second of all to my body is gonna be so exhausted who knows if I'll be able to get uh, conceive a baby so um, I started looking for another job even though I was I loved what I did but I just, um, something inside me wasn't right. Something was missing. I didn't know at the time, but I just was like, I have to move on. And I unfortunately found, well, fortunately at the time, I found a great job that was more money, um, you know, more opportunity to grow, all kinds of stuff. But I was miserable there because I was working around all these very unhappy people. The CEO that um, that uh, hired me was literally like, so un- unconsiderate that I was, I just got pregnant right before I, I actually uh, resigned from the school. And I was vomiting a lot and I was morning sickness. And so I was in the bathroom all the time. And she came in once and was like, are you seriously vomiting again? And she's like, you're going to have to figure something out because I need you at your desk, not in the bathroom. And I was like, oh my gosh, really? Like I'm first baby, never experienced this before. I'm sick and you're going to make me feel bad about it. So I realized that I was like, it was really bringing me down mentally, emotionally, physically, everything. And it was just this environment of negativity. Everybody hated their jobs. Everybody, you know, complained about everything they did. And it was getting to me. And I'd go home just complaining and angry and mad and and we'd end up fighting. And it was just horrible. It was bringing negativity to my home. And I didn't want that. I was like, I'm generally a happy person and I'm not a happy person anymore. So I quit. (laughs) Um... Then I went on to other jobs, other administrative jobs, dental jobs um, that I just, again, I wasn't me. I couldn't get my, I couldn't put my passion into it. And when I don't put passion into something or 100%, I knew there's something wrong. Because I, like I said before, I like to put 100% into everything. I like to be good at whatever I do. And I just couldn't do it. And so we ended up, um, I ended up being out of a job for a while. And we, I unfortunately, I am sad to say, we ended up losing our home that Mitch bought for us before we got married because I, we had a financial plan of me working and I didn't have a job. And so because of me, because I was unhappy and I was unstable and didn't know what the heck I wanted to do with my life, we ended up losing our home. Now, looking back, I know everything happens for a reason because I know that it was each step, but then it was devastating, and I felt such a failure to my my husband, my new baby that was only a year old that we when we lost our home, and so I was just oh my gosh, this is horrible. So I did some temp jobs, and I found a job that um, at a steel company. Never thought I'd ever work some at a construction site. Just I've done it all, okay. And um, to be honest with you, that was the most pleasant job I ever worked with. I mean, for because. Nobody really bothered me. They kind of kept to themselves. Um, it was all men, and they all just kind of did their own thing, let me do my little woman administrative job, and uh, that's it. They left me alone. And so it was probably the happiest I've ever been working for somebody else, to be honest with you. And they, it's because I didn't have to really deal with anybody's drama, and that's very rare in a business. And usually you owe, people's drama always gets brought into their work and then it gets put onto you and you get their attitudes and their, you know, baggage and everything and then you have a bad day. And so unfortunately, after working there a year, the job got shut down because the, the, the builders that were building this, um, this uh, casino that they were building for them went bankrupt. So now I was out of a job, even though I loved my job, I loved going to work every day. I loved the people that I worked with and I'm still friends with them to this day. It, actually, one of the girls I worked with is on my Sensi team now. Um, 
But it's it was devastating. So again, I'm back at square one. I finally found a job that I like and it's gone. And there's nothing I could do about it. And then we found out that we were being PCS'd, which Mitch was full-time military. So we were being sent somewhere else out of the state, never been away from my mom, never been away from my family, my friends that I grew up with in Vegas. It was scary. And so what we thought, I was I had brand new, um, I had a two-year-old son at the time, a brand new baby. My daughter was not even, I mean, she, I got laid off in uh, literally six months, six weeks after I came back from my six week um, maternity leave. So she was brand new still, 12 weeks old. And we were like, well, what are we going to do? So we were living on base and we basically, we figured out that we could, um, with my unemployment, we were going to be able to kind of skim by. And uh, that's really what we did. We put food on the table, we paid the bills and that's it with my unemployment. And um, we basically, you know, I wasn't, nobody would hire me cause they all knew that I was leaving, um, in January of the following year. So I couldn't find a job. So I was on unemployment for about a full year and then we moved to New Mexico and I have to say <laughs> it was the biggest blessing in disguise because when I moved there, I was devastated. I was miserable. I hated it. I hated the town. I hated the people. Um, it was, it was not a good thing. So for the first uh, year, well, let me back up. Three months after Mitch and I moved there, he ended up going to Japan for five months. And so literally I moved my entire world away from my support system, my family, my friends, everything that I knew. And he ended up leaving. And I was there all by myself. All by myself. I didn't know anybody. So... When I knew this was going to happen, I there was a, a another uh, military spouse that was in um, Las Vegas with us <coughs> at um, Nellis Air Force Base, and never met her before. But or actually, I met her once at like a birthday party, but didn't really know her. I was like, "Well, she just PCS here too." I said, "You know what? If I'm going to make this work and be all by myself, I'm going to have to step out of my shell. I'm going to have to call this lady up and be like, "Look, we're in the same situation. We might as well be friends." <laughs> We both have kids, you know, and that's really the way I looked at it. I said, I, I can't be the shy person that, you know, people that know me, I'm outgoing once I'm comfortable with people, but normally I'm shy. I don't really just like jump right in and say, hi, I'm Jessica. That wasn't me. It was, I had to be comfortable. Once I'm comfortable, I was a social bee, but in my comfort zone, it with around my family, my comfortable friends and family that accepted me, but that's it. And so I literally talked to myself and said, you have to step out of your shell and you have to do something you normally wouldn't because you're never going to make a friend. You're going to be all by yourself with your two kids in the middle of nowhere. So I did that. I called her up, left her message and said, hi, I don't know if you remember me, but um, you, our husbands work together. They're both leaving. Um, I just figured maybe we can have a play date once a week or something or just get together, see how the kids get along and you know, we'll see what happens because I know you don't have any family or friends here either. So, hey, you know, we have some things in common. Let's see what goes, what happens. And she ended up being one of my closest friends for the entire year and a half that I was, um, about, it was about a year actually. And we, we did everything together. We went walking together. We, you know, it really kind of got me through, uh, you know, the time that he was gone. And, but uh, about not quite a year later, well, well, actually, again, I'm sorry, I'm saying this kind of improv, but once when Mitch was in um, gone in the Japan, I realized that unemployment was going to exhaust eventually, and me just hanging out and being with the kids was not going to cut it anymore for in a while. So I was kind of looking at the future, like once this exhausts. Meanwhile, I was looking for jobs, but it was a small little town, and nobody was offering jobs. And if they were, it was going to cost me more to put them in the daycare. So I'm sure any moms know that I have been in that same situation. So at that point, I couldn't find a job to pay enough to put my kids in daycare. I knew one person and then I knew another person, which I'm going to talk to you about um, on my next segment that's going to lead me to me joining the Sensi.